Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out RV Daydream. We got Heidi with us today. Hello. We just got done shooting a video uh, that was about changes in our attitude uh, as far as full-time RVing. But we want to catch everybody up with everything that's been going on, which isn't a lot, but let's go ahead and jump right into it. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and play some clips from videos that we shot in the past, and some of them were a few weeks ago, but I'm going to chop them up, make them kind of short and sweet, and let you see what's happening. Now, the first thing is uh, a couple of accessories that we got for the F-250. If you guys have a newer F-150 or a newer F-250, and you're having a problem finding places to put your phones. <laughs> We've got a couple accessories we'll link and, and put in the description and everything, but here's that clip. Well, all the snow is kind of going away, and I got stuff I need to do. Not very much, though, but we're going to keep you up to date. I'm going to tack this on to a video that has got more meat to it than just uh, what I did the last time, and uh, we'll see what happens. I'm exercising the generator because I'm lazy. Uh, I did not take the battery out and put it on a maintainer like I normally do so we're gonna go ahead and uh, let this thing charge itself put a charge to the battery and of course you're supposed to exercise your generator anyways so as I mentioned before there's one thing that Ford did that they were not uh, on the ball as far as their engineering and that is I'm assuming this is supposed to be some sort of a phone holder you know just the toss in type thing because what else are you going to toss in here i mean it can't be loose change you can't put change in here either because in case you put this up uh there goes all that and our phones don't barely fit in here i can they don't fit lengthwise they kind of fit widthwise at least a samsung s9 plus will fit widthwise with a case on it um but a note 9 with a case will not fit I, I got to kind of cram it in there and you know it's just not a good design and you can see there's not a lot of places to put mounts unless you just start gluing stuff to your dash or you use your vents well I would assume that um, if you block your vent off to some extent it's going to suck uh, whenever it comes summer and you're wanting that cold air blowing on you but nonetheless uh, that's why I put this mount up here for the GPS so even though they have USB port here and they've got a plug here that you could plug something into. Uh, we went ahead and opted for a, a, this type of a plug, which you could see when I turn it on. It gives me a voltage reading. It gives me four USBs, and uh, I know two of them for sure are fast charge. Yeah, the bottom two ones are fast charge. And then, of course, it gives you three ports uh, to plug in uh, some sort of power device. And then, I, you know, you just plug this one into the truck and that's what powers everything it's kind of nice it gives you a little meter there i'll put the link down below for this if you wanted this for your travels uh it does tell me how much voltage is in there and it does change i mean when i got the truck running it's like 14 volts that that thing reads but anyways even though you have the ability to plug some stuff in uh, i don't have anywhere to mount it and i really don't want to make any permanent additions to the dash so let me show you what i picked up and uh, how easy they are to install. You want to talk about an easy installation. Well, this is one of them, that's for sure. The company's called ProClip, and this is what they sent me. So what do these do? I mean, look at how long there. Isn't that crazy? Well, what they do is they use your dash uh, and the molding that is in the dash and the vents uh, to clip. Um, it's really, really straightforward. Let me see here. This says... Um, Oh, well, there's one downfall. It don't say left or right. <laughs> Not sure why that would be. But there's a couple of adhesive pieces right here that you peel back that help secure it to the dash, which I'll, I'll have to do a little bit of alcohol rub cleaning just to make sure there's a good adhesion there. But this is for the left and the right side. So uh, instead of me just talking about two big pieces of plastic, let me show you. So the underside, you can see there's a, a little hook here, and it's it's like pretty sharp it's a pretty heavy plastic sharp edge there's a rubber thing here that has some resistance to it as far as sliding there's a rubber pad here also these are contact points on the dash uh, for whenever this thing goes in place um, it helps keep it from moving around and vibrating and then you can see there's two pieces of 3m tape 
So what you do is you hook this in the back, pull this forward, and it's spring-loaded, and it actually hooks to your um, vent, inside your vent here, and there's no drilling. That's the best part. So I'm peeling the little red pieces of backing off of the adhesive, so that way when it does get to where it needs to be, it stays, and you can see it hooks very, it's very nice the way that it hooks back there. I mean, it's very positive. You want to line it up as best as you can with uh, the contours of the dash. You don't want to go too far either direction. And then you just pull this back, and that's it. It's now adhered to the dash. It's now connected. And I have to say, that's pretty darn solid. That's a good, good mount right there. Yeah, we had nothing up here at all to help with the, um, you know, with mounting a phone. And then, of course, the passenger side, which is, you know, a specific mount, just like you would think, uh, goes on the same way. So the other one's up there now, too. And, uh, yeah, two per pretty good mounts. So I have to say that it's, it's well-engineered. Uh, the weak point, I think, on this mount is where it connects to the dash. I mean, you're giving an awful lot of faith to uh, the plastic vent that Ford has provided <laughs> and its ability to actually hold, you know, something, anything for that matter. But uh, I think it's more for stabilization than anything else because this part of it here is really sturdy. I mean, it's, it's as sturdy as the dash is going to be and it's better than most other mounts. So what I'll have to do again is uh, find some kind of a mount situation that I can use the phone. I want mine to actually drop down a little bit in front of the vent. I knew going into this that they're a little bit high. Uh, I wish that they were adjustable and that's why I didn't buy their phone mounts. Well, two reasons. Uh, one, because the phone mount that they had uh, said that it can work with a case, but the problem is, is it's just the phone would slide in. Uh, just to give you an idea, if you would have put the phone in, it would be up like this. Uh, that's a little bit too high for me. I understand it's in eyes view and everything, but I, I just I want my phone about down to here or uh, yeah, somewhere in here. Now, I know they make vent mounts and stuff like that. I didn't want to mount anything specifically to the vent. It doesn't seem like it's ever out of the way I, I don't know why I just never had good luck with vent mounts and plus I have these phone cases that uh, they're moment phone cases I did this review on this in the past and I have a camera lens that whenever my action cam runs out of power I can just screw on a wide-angle lens to this case and uh, shoot really really decent video I have that for my s9 uh, plus and I have it for this note 9 so I, I didn't want to screw around with the case and put a different case on or necessarily put any adhesion on this one. And I mean, the S9 case, it's wood. It's actually real wood. I don't know how that would work. So this is going to offer uh, me an option that might do me pretty well. Uh, again, this is thick enough plastic. I mean, it is relatively thick. Uh, well, the whole thing is that I should be able to drill this and uh, with it here... And with 3M adhesive, stick a mount on here, maybe put a couple screws in it, small screws, and then uh, be able to position it wherever I want for the phone to go in. Like my other uh, mount just clicks in. You just put the phone in and it clicks. So it'll block the vent. And you heard what I just said about that, you know, not wanting to block the vent necessarily. Um, I don't think it would be as bad as if I had a vent mount that went right into the vent. Uh, at least this way I can deflect a little bit of the air around the phone. And it may not be a bad thing, because honestly, whenever we're running our phones for uh, GPS or uh, running Pandora, whatever the case, um, in the summer, especially with the sun coming down through the windshield, uh, they do get a little bit hot. So it'd be kind of nice that I can put that air up on there. So you see, pretty simple, not difficult at all to do. We... I don't know. We we still haven't put any phone mounts on it yet because I'm still trying to decide how I want to mount the phone mounts to those things. But they are definitely pretty sturdy. They're there.
their and their their customer service is really good too. So if you guys have any problems with the product, get in contact with them. Now the next clip here is just uh, us checking up on the RV, me walking through it. It's a really cold day. It's not that way now, but it was then. So let's take a look. Well, it's fared pretty well. Uh, obviously, the uh, spot reserved parking number five <laughs> is definitely um, not able to be used so if we went out and decided to RV which we're not going to but if we did I would not be able to uh, park my uh, rig in the same way I'd have to pull it forward and back it in which they left it all open for us though so what I'm gonna do is uh, get out take a look it looks like the awnings drooping a little bit I can fix that. That's not really drooping. I, it's just the way I see it. But yeah, yeah, this is, uh, they did a pretty good job keeping this all plowed, except my tires are spinning. Can you see back there? Look, I, even, I don't even have my foot on the gas. <laughs> and it's both tires are spinning because I have my uh, electronic locker <laughs> locked in right now. So the other one's spinning too. Oh, they just stopped finally. Let me go ahead and see if I can goose it a little. Woo, okay, so I'm gonna have to four wheel drive it. Yeah, now nah, I'm in four wheel drive, watch it. Oh, uh, no, oh, it still wanted to slide. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get out, I'm gonna take a look at this thing and uh, Make sure, I mean, that was a pretty good storm that we had. I'm gonna make sure everything turned out okay still and there's no problems that I need to be concerned with. What I was concerned with is the snow arcing over and uh, basically everything from this roof running onto mine, but it doesn't look like it's an issue. Yeah, this actually looks considerably really good. Whew, okay, it's really cold in here. It's 16 inside. And man, does it feel it. Uh, everything looks great. Just like I thought, I'm getting back in the truck. It's, it's really cold in here. I'm in my bare feet, or my socks. <laughs> I'm in my, my socks only because I don't want to trape snow throughout the RV. But yeah, it's definitely cold. Woo, but everything looks good, just like before. I don't know why I get concerned about that stuff. Like I said, it's just me being me. But it looked good in there. Wow, am I really cold. I don't know why I thought it was... A good idea to be walking around in there with my uh, socks only but I went and checked all the roof in the corners and there's no signs of any water getting in anywhere so we're in good shape there kind of funny huh it seems like that that cold was going to last for a while and yet it didn't and it got relatively warm and it's been kind of warm for the month overall uh, of February we actually were warmer than average so it's kind of funny that whenever that was going on i didn't think that was the case at all all right so now we're up to pretty much current like i said we just shot that video talking about all the stuff that we've done as far as the way we've changed what we were doing uh, along the way but as far as current events that are going on um we have already processed our payment uh as far as getting the new rv uh what I'm trying to say is we have the check in our hand and all we have to do is hand it to the dealer. The dealer for the most part says, when your RV comes in, I'll give you a call. <laughs> in the meantime, uh, we're gonna be traveling and going and checking out the Rockwood plant. Now, there's some bad news to that and some good news to that and our patrons already know this. I've already posted this a few days ago for our patrons. And basically what the deal is there's one guy that does all the tours out there. His name's Anthony. Really nice guy. Love talking with him. He's he's just, you can tell. I mean, it's just, there's a customer service aspect that's that he provides that you just feel very comfortable with. And the tour that he would have had to put together would have been on about the 20th of March. Now, the problem with that being the 20th of March uh, for him is he's not going to be in town. I guess he has a meeting for like three days and he's not going to be in town. So he can't, unfortunately, do the tour. And what I'm saying is that's the day that our RV, the 19th and the 20th of March of 2019, our RV, our, the RV that we custom ordered, should be built. But uh, the good news is um, he did give us the VIN number 
So with that VIN number, we secured the check from the bank. So that lets us just hand it over whenever we get our RV. It's all that's all done. Um, and the other kind of good news is he can do a tour for us, and they are still going to be making one of the 2600 series Rockwood Ultralights. Now, ours is a Rockwood Ultralight 2604 WS. I think the one that the, he said that they're going to be running the day that we sh get there to do the tour is a 2606 or something like that. I'm going to have to double check that. But nonetheless, it's essentially a lot like our RV, except the floor plan's completely different. All I want to see is basically the building part of it how the walls get attached, how the tanks get secured in the frame, what the frame looks like before the walls get in on it, the insulation, the uh, heating part of it. I mean, all that. I'd love to see all that. Um, and we'll be able to see that. It's just not on our specific RV. Now, the good news is uh, there's a chance that he might be able to arrange for us to actually go see then our RV. The, our, our, the one that we ordered, or custom ordered, we can go actually see it at the plant when it's done. Taking pictures. Taking pictures of it. <laughs> and of course you guys will see that. It's really nice that that chance is available. I, I hope that's the case. So what we're going to have to do is um, our son is actually out of town for uh, a couple of days here. And uh, for the week actually. He'll be coming back and we'll just make sure that he's manning the front here at the house. Um, and we will then make our little trip out to Indiana and check it out. So that's kind of catching you guys up. Um, other things that are going on, other than the excitement of trying to go check out this Rockwood, uh, we have already started the talks amongst ourselves on how we need to get the new RV and the old RV at the house at the same time, where they're gonna park, how they're gonna park, our driveway is such a disaster. I, right now, that's not even a consideration, but we need to figure out what it's going to take to get our old RV ready to sell because at some point it's just going to be dead weight for us. And on top of that, we're talking March. I mean, you heard the, the dates that I'm talking. We're talking end of March, beginning of April. Guess what everybody's mm -hmm. doing? Just like us, they're getting that itch. Mm -hmm. They're getting that itch to get out of their their, you know, their snowed in cabin <laughs> getting that cabin fever and they're wanting to get out and we want to make sure that our old rv is prepped cleaned set up ready to just hook up and take off to california if you want to for the next owner without any worries you get all the the paperwork and documents i mean it's a stack that big matter of fact the envelope that it came from Direct from the factory. It's a Terry or a Fleetwood envelope. It's a vinyl envelope. It's all tore. Had to be taped up because it don't fit in there. All this <laughs> stuff that we've got in there. And we want to be able to make sure that that thing's ready to go. Um, and, of course, put it up for sale. And, yes, we will discuss the price and everything else. What we're asking for whenever it gets to that point. we got some researching to do. We think we know already what we want for it. Uh, but we want to make sure that we aren't so high that people think that we're trying to rip them off and so low that we don't get back a lot of the money that we put into it. Uh, however, I think we would, no, we, yeah, yeah. We, I think, I think the dollar amount that we have, we're going to basically come out even. So essentially we, we bought the RV. We've done a ton of work, which we're not going to count all that on there because that's a lot of labor. That would never get recouped. Uh, then uh, we used it, and then we're basically selling it for all the money that we have in it. So it, it should come out pretty even there. But we wanted to touch base. Heidi was free. She was off for the day. It was kind of nice, right? We're just all excited about the changes, uh, the new truck, the new camper, and getting rid of our stuff, and getting our house ready to sell hopefully it, this year we're getting awful close yeah you know what it is it's we're losing out on reasons why we're not getting it <laughs> ready for sale that i think that's the th case for me i mean um there are some big things that we need to do and uh 
it's funny because there's always some kind of big amount of money that we need to outlay for something. Uh, the, the, our next big outlay of money uh, is definitely going to have to be for a Hensley Hitch. Uh, I, I mean, it's looking like three grand for that. It's, it's so funny. I feel really uncomfortable spending that kind of money whenever I can put a ball hitch on my bumper and tow the RV. Oh. I mean, the, the truck can handle it. However, that's not the right way to do it. I know that. And I would really like that peace of mind. I know a lot of you are like, hey, just get this hitch, get this, you know, what? I understand that entirely. The it's, thing is, is we've done that twice. We Yeah. we So we have stuff laying in the garage that we could at least get at home, but it's not the right stuff. And we keep the upgrading. The right stuff, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we... Uh, keep changing and if we just do this once we don't have to change that again and that can be for other yeah another camp another travel trailer yeah. right yeah, yeah. Th that's uh, sh she's 100 percent right i'm going to listen to her because <laughs> this same conversation happened whenever we were getting the cap for the new truck <laughs> and i was thinking i don't want to spend that kind of money for a cap that's just so expensive for the cap why don't we try to get a lesser cap and maybe do this and she's like no why don't we just get the cap that we want the one that's nice the one that we think is and spend the money just spend the money and get it over with and we did it and i still think about that money outlay occasionally but man do i love that cap and i'm like wow every every time i even come close to thinking about it it's like yeah but the cap is awesome how much of a guy am I? I get excited over a truck cap. You know? An old guy at that. Yeah, an old guy. That's an old guy. I want that old, I want the aluminum one. I should have got the white aluminum one with the curtains in it. <laughs> but yeah, the whole idea that I was trying to talk to her and I said, well, you know, we could get away. And I already started doing this. I already did this for the truck with the old RV. I spent $100 on that drop bar to put an old hitch head on there. And it will tow the old RV, but I, that is kind of one of the reasons that we got the new RV. Because I thought, how much am I going to invest setting up a new hitch system again for the third time, fourth time, because it was the F-150 initially, mm -hmm. for an old RV? Why don't we get a new RV that sets at a certain height, and we get a hitch for that? And then I started thinking, well, we can get away with that old one, especially you guys. You don't know how many times I listen to your comments. You guys. <laughs> <laughs> listen to your comments, and you guys are saying, oh, you know, all you need is this. Just hook it up with this, and that'll be fine. And I know that. I know what I can get away with. Cobbler's kids always go barefoot. Well, mechanics know what they can get away with. <laughs> and I know I can get away with just a regular old hitch with one of those cheap sway control systems that I had before. But we're not trying to buy stuff and then upgrade. Right. And we're, we need to be smart about it. S we, we're not... Spend the money the first time. Right. Do it right, at least in our minds. Everybody has their own idea of what right is. But, yeah, that's yeah. Let, let's just do that and get it over with. Uh, so, anyways, that's a big outlay. Other than that, I, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys are saying this. And, and I, we even asked this ourselves. We talked about this already. When's your next big trip in your new RV? And where are you guys going to? Well, the fact that we've got to lay out a decent amount of money uh, for that hitch, and we've laid out a decent amount of money in the last, you know, since November, basically. There won't be a big trip this year, I don't think. I'll have to come up with some sort of little miracle, <laughs> like I always do. Um, but yeah, you gotta realize that even though we have a plan, for uh, becoming debt-free again, and it's going to be relatively quick, uh, probably within the next couple of years. Um, and we have we have funds in place that we're not going to touch, um, and that's part of our process of becoming full timers. Uh, we've always had that plan in the back of our mind. So even though we just signed our on the dotted line for a couple of big purchases. Uh, we already have a plan for those to go away as far as the bill for those things. Um, but we still have a process that we've got to go through before we actually do that. So in the meantime, 
I'm making big payments uh, on a couple of things. We're making big payments on a couple of things. And basically, the way Heidi and I's finances have always been was almost every trip that we go on, I kind of take care of that. I make sure that uh, she may pay for gas half the trip, but I make sure that I pay for the other half of the gas and all the stops and attractions and the food and whatever we do and the stays, you know, in the campgrounds. I take care of all that. Um, even though we have a lot of this, you know, our, our finances are all muddied up together. Oh. We do have a, a his and hers type thing. She's got, you know, her group of money. I have my group of money. And I make sure that we have money for all those trips. Well, I pretty much made the decision that we're not going to wait for two years, then go out and buy our new truck and our new RV. I said, we're going to buy that earlier. Um, and that's what we did. And up until that two-year mark or whatever, we actually go out and do this, I will use that money that I had um, that we're going on our trips with, and uh, I'm going to be using that to make the payments on. Needless to say, the payments are pretty substantial. Nothing crazy. I mean, everybody's got truck payments and everybody's got car, you know, RV payments. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, um, it's going to take away from our fun money. So, uh, but, but we have a lot of stuff going on too. Yeah. Um, we downsizing grandbaby <laughs> my daughter's going to be giving um, birth we're actually picking up the rv <laughs> we're actually going on a beach vacation there's some money year. there i gotta get money for gas it's, for all that um we are staying on the beach with uh, my family this year so that is um something different yeah and that's gonna it's not although everything's taken care of for the yeah. most part other than us going and doing all the attractions and the yeah. drinking and well, we out don't, to dinner and all our stuff is going to be gas there and food. We we probably won't do much. I'm going to the bar every day well, right next door. Food and yeah, food and drinks. Food and drinks <laughs> and gas to get home and get there. <laughs> but yeah, that's so we got a lot of stuff that's on the burner this year, and we have also a lot to share with you guys because we're going to we're you know. Again, getting you can see, I'm getting excited about this. You know, we're going to be able to get this new RV. I'm going to have a new hitch. You know, that's a toy for me, I guess you can say, that I get to screw around with. I get to shoot a lot of video of what it's like and towing with it. And, and you're going to see me doing one of these numbers, I'm sure, trying to swing it and feel it and what it, you know, how much movement it's got. Um, I want to feel what the RV's like being towed behind the truck. We get to look at gas mileage numbers when we go on any kind of a trip, because I'm sure we'll do some sort of little trip. Um, and uh, the upgrades, the changes, all the stuff I'm going to find wrong with this new RV. I can't wait for that. I can't wait to pick this thing apart. I'm going to point out every little thing that I'm going to be upset about. But of course, there's a lot of things that I'll most likely be happy about. Um, I mean, just the fact that we narrowed it down and we chose one. <laughs> that was a big... <laughs> that that pretty much tell you that how picky we are. We did find one that, you know, like I said before, checked a lot of boxes. But we're just trying to share all this with you. So you get to see a lot of stuff. It's just going to be a little bit different this year. I think we're going to be focusing more uh, for the next this next year. We're going to be focusing more on, uh, most likely, our focus on becoming downsized at the home here mm -hmm. and getting this house ready Get you know getting rid of stuff getting rid of stuff that's that's something that i think that our channel leaned into a little bit a few years ago and the reason that i know i'd like to get back into that again is because whenever we watched uh static nomadic rick the static nomadic when we first watched him he was walking through his house with a camera mm -hmm. showing all the stuff that he had for sale and how he had it all in the corners and what was going to go and what he was going to take with him. And he was talking about all the crap he used to have. I found that really interesting. It was interesting to see the person downsizing and, and what they had to do to downsize. And in our case, we're going to be doing the same thing. We're going to be uh, focusing on that more because we are getting to crunch time for sure. I mean, this year, if we're as busy as we think we're going to be, 
it's going to go fast. And again, probably not as many big long trips because how can you be downsizing and getting a house ready for sale while we're driving to Arizona and seeing what the weather's like out there? I mean, it just doesn't work. So the channel will change a little bit, but we'll get back to uh, having fun. We're going to have fun regardless. Yeah. We'll have fun regardless. So will you guys, I promise. <laughs> All right, that's it. We're, we're done. We're going to close this out. It went long enough. Anything you want to add, woman? Nope. All right. That's it, guys. As always, hope to see you out there. Bye. Bye.